Hey guys, Brendan here with another Talking Point video. Uh, something that uh, we'll be doing throughout the season, whatever issues arise, we'll bring them up. And I think to start off with, I thought of maybe, because it's 2019, new year, a new season, uh, look at what's going to be the five biggest factors for SA Rugby to manage this year. And uh, they're five big ones as well that can have a huge impact in the sport. <music> So yeah, it goes. Let's kick it off straight away. Number one, <laughs> there's always and it's the one that overshadows the whole year. It's the Rugby World Cup, the William Webb Ellis Trophy. Uh, yeah, watching this in Japan in September, this is the big one. Everything's geared towards that. Rossi Rasmus, everything he's doing this year is geared towards that uh, tournament as well. And to have the Springboks there, they? they had the win in Wellington. They showed some glimpses, but. Ultimately, 2018 ended up with a lot more disappointments than they probably would have had. They made progress, but they didn't get to exactly where they would have wanted to get by this time of the season. This year, there's only four warm-up tests. There's a fifth one against Japan just before the World Cup as well. But there's not a lot of time to, uh, to do anything, to, to do preparation. So Super Rugby becomes your preparation. So in a World Cup year, the biggest thing for Springbok Rugby, for SA Rugby, etc. will be the World Cup. Everything uh, hangs on that. We all know the fans, the players, uh, the, the public, all, you know, the Springboks success is a big thing. And it's good to have a good build up. I think there's a nucleus of a team that's going to do really well. But there are some factors that they have to look at as well. And we'll probably deal with that in a separate video at some point. But for now, I think uh, yeah, the Rugby World Cup, the planning for that, the preparation, and of course the tournament. It's a seven week journey where if you get everything right, you lift that beautiful Webb Ellis Trophy as well. Uh, and you can claim to be world champions as well. It would be nice to see somebody else other than the All Blacks win the World, Ch world Cup as well. I think South Africa have got a chance. I think there's probably, it's probably the most wide open World Cup in years. Uh, Ireland looking exceptionally strong after their win over the All Blacks. England look like a team that they're building as well under Eddie Jones. Maybe not be long term, but for the next year, I think England are still a big factor. Scotland and Wales can both cause upsets. They're both teams that I don't think Scotland will get there, but Wales are the type of team that does surprise good defence and Warren Gatlin's a very, very, very good and very astute coach as well. So there's a lot of talk there. What's going to happen with Australia? We don't know. Uh, Michael Checker, he's surviving at the moment, but uh, how's that going to affect their World Cup preparation? Argentina tend to do well at World Cups, but I think the biggest factor for SA Rugby is that the Springbok team are at their best at this tournament. Number two, and this is a big one, this is one that we might not see all the details, but behind the scenes, it's going to be a huge one for South African rugby. Sanzar and the broadcasters are, and the individual unions are sit, sitting around trying to mull over what's going to be the best Super Rugby format for the next year. The contract is up in 2020. Uh, we, we see, we're going to see a lot of negotiations behind the scenes, a lot of uh, format coming out being taken to the broadcasters. We won't always know the details of this, but behind the scenes, the future of Super Rugby will be decided, and mainly this year, and mainly in in, in decisions which, which we won't see too much about, but you'll read about every now and again, and hopefully, and I think everybody's uh, hope is that the, the, they come up with a system that everybody can enjoy, and that makes Super Rugby great again and again, uh, to coin a phrase. One of the problems has been that Super Rugby, a wonderful tournament as, as it is, has become too complicated. There's too many time zones, there's too many teams. Uh, yeah, there's, it's too complicated working out which conference is winners. That, uh, that. And yeah, some of us warned the guys when they came, when they started this. Um, we were promised a different system, but I think everybody's in agreement. The current system doesn't work. And, uh, and for some reason, if we're going to get people back, we need to refresh the tournament revitalize it, get it back to what it should be. And I think the best way of doing that is probably if what they're looking at at the moment, with the hearing they're looking at at the moment, is a 14-team round robin, super 14 sort of format. But that means we're probably going to have to drop one team. And uh, likely at the moment, probably either one from Argentina or Japan. I can't see any of the South African or Australian or New Zealand teams dropping out. So it'll probably be one of those. But all these decisions need to be made. This is, of course, the, I won't call it the Rebel League, but the alternative league that's starting off there in Perth. Uh, the Falco are taking part and a bunch of other teams are taking part as well. So there's, there's a lot of leagues and different competitions in the offing and a lot of changes that will probably happen. We'll probably hear a lot more about 
in this coming season. So I think that, to me, a big wish is that Super Rugby gets put into a format that everybody enjoys again, which makes the competition the, the spectacle that it was that captured our attention over all these years. And, and of course, which is fairer to teams in terms of, 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 of traveling and everything else that we play everybody in a, a season that they, we don't have these same gripes going around and around again. So for me, Super Rugby, the format, we might not see it publicly as much this year. We might, every now and again we'll hear a bit about it, but it's a huge, huge factor this year. Number three, the new contracting system that's coming in in SA Rugby. We've, um, we've heard about it, we've read about it, we've read about the different uh, scenarios that Rossi Rasmus uh, wants to bring in as director of rugby. He wants to half the number of professional players in the country. We want to limit teams to 40 to 45 players in the squad and, and, and just make rugby a bit more streamlined. And yeah, at the moment, I don't think there's anybody who, who, who disagree that there probably are too many professional rugby players in this country. We have a wealth of talent, but it doesn't help when a lot of those talent, especially at some of the bigger super rugby teams, you see players um, sitting around juniors teams at Western Province had, and the Bulls, I think, had over 45 under 21s contracted last year. Uh, you know, when you have situations like that where there are too many players that don't get game time, they don't play and eventually get disillusioned. And yeah, it's not good for talent as well. So that talent should be spread around a little bit more. If the contracts are half, the teams are, are forced to only have 40 to 45 players in there. Super Rugby or Pro 14 squads, we'll see a, a, a bit of a better spread as well and that could eventually come back to revitalizing like the club game on the university game, the Varsity Cup, where those, some of those players will go back into that system and obviously help strengthen that system and a lot of the smaller unions will probably get some of those players as well. So there's a lot of, uh, I suppose, advantages as well. We, you don't always see the disadvantages until things happen. There's obviously going to be players who are going to fall through the cracks, players we're going to lose to overseas. Um, you know, there's going to be players who are not going to get contracts, who, who are, are, are maybe would be great backup players who should be playing the game, who maybe don't get that opportunity because of the limited squads. So I suppose we'll have to implement it first to see where the, where the flaws are. But it'll be very interesting to see where those flaws are. And, and how that changes rugby. I think financially, South African rugby needs lesser players because we're playing a lot of players and we need, we're not competing against the yen and euro and, and, and pound at the moment. And the only way we're going to really do that is by actually limiting the amount of players, using our resources better and, and making sure that we keep the players we want in South Africa here. You're always going to lose players overseas, but if you can keep most of them here in South Africa, that would really be a good start as well. So that's going to be a big thing. We'll have to see how it's implemented. It hasn't been 100% accepted yet. Uh, there have been provinces that have already made that move towards that. But I think in the next year, we're probably going to see a lot more of that happening and a lot more, um, uh, I don't know what the word is, or, uh, a lot more, uh, I suppose, a bit of chaos um, in, in our local rugby circles until this settles down and we have a, a system that everybody buys into. But once we do, I think streamlining South African rugby would be a great thing as well. And uh, it'll be interesting to see. But then we'll see that play over next year. And that's the third, issue, that third point in this year's top five. This brings us back to number four in, in the list as well. We're expecting an exodus of players. I and mean, we, we've heard stories already of up to a dozen Springboks who are going to head overseas afterwards. We've had Evan Etzebeth, who's had this massive offer from Toulon. There's other, other players we know are getting offers as well. Uh, there's even players who, who aren't in the current Springbok setup. The Dupria twins will be uh, sought by teams like Sale and Leicester. And we're going to see a lot more players getting these offers through the year. That's natural. It's, a, it's end of a World Cup cycle. You see a lot of players moving in the end of a World Cup cycle. A lot of Springboks as well. But the key for SA Rugby is going to be to keep the players that they want. Uh, the key players, the guys in the spine. Um, you know, 2, 9, 10, 12, 15, those guys need to be kept in the country. So I think, I think there's, a lot of, there's a lot of behind the scenes uh, talk at the moment. Will there be Springbok contracts? Won't there be Springbok contracts? What will happen to players as well? Because of course, the more players who leave, the, the younger and the, and the um, you know, less experienced our, our super rugby squads become as well. So I think there's gonna be a lot going on there behind the scenes, but if we see a lot of players leaving, uh, in the country at the end of the year, a lot of spring box. It means Rossi Erasmus probably either has to alter his policy in what he picks 
or he's going to start with a very young squad going into 2020 as well. So that Exodus players, those, those fights are behind the scenes between agents and contracts and, and, uh, and, and union officials and SA Rugby. Uh, but there are, there's going to be a lot going on behind the scenes. You're going to get a lot of rumours of players going to places and uh, hopefully, hopefully South Africa can keep a number of that Springbok team, that nucleus of the Springbok team together. Number five, the last one, the very last one, is just one's going to capture our attention. Probably the headlines all year around. 2019, the World Cup is is the due date for Saru's transformation plan. They've got targets that they set five years ago, not just on the field. Although the Springboks are probably the one that everybody's going to look at, but the transformation targets, which is supposed to be at 50% uh, at, at the end of this 2019 season, go a long more way beyond that. It goes between. Uh, employee composition and at rugby unions, it goes in team management in a number of different factors, employment equity becomes a bigger thing this year and especially because SA Rugby are going to be judged by how well they hit their targets. I know there's been a lot of talk behind the scenes as well about that and there will be a lot of headlines going through the year at exactly how well teams have done, how franchises have done, rugby unions have done in this, in this one. There's a lot of challenges, it's a complex issue. And, uh, and, and I know a lot of guys are, are working well at it and there are some teams that are struggling as well. So that's going to become a big issue and especially as we get close to the World Cup. Everyone's going to look at the composition of the Springbok squad for the World Cup. But that's not where the focus should be. That is one part of the focus. But the focus on how well the rugby unions, the 14 rugby unions have hit their transformation targets this year. Well, uh, well over the last five years will be very interesting and there'll be a lot of political uh, scrutiny of that and of course it will tend to influence the game as well and a lot of our talking points around the water cooler as well. Uh, Sorry committed themselves to these transformation targets, how well they've got them is going to be a very interesting point and I think that's something to watch over the next year as well. Okay so that's it, that's our, our last five, our top five for the year and that is what I believe probably the top five issues for the year for SA Rugby are. Uh, obviously there's a lot on the field, results always take precedence how teams do, but those are five issues that I think we're going to see dominating quite a few of the headlines away from the field this, this season as well. Uh, Rugby World Cup is a huge one that looms over everything and how the Springboks do tends to be how we see our year as well. So um, yeah, let me know what you think. Do you agree with those five? What do you think of the five that I, ch that I chose? Uh, let me know what you think. If you, if you reckon there are others that I didn't mention, please mention them. We can address them in another video. But these talking points are, are going to happen throughout the season on this channel and will be something I'll be bringing up a lot more as these things arise in the season. Remember one thing, remember the subscribe button at the bottom, please. Please subscribe. Remember that little bell over there if you want to get notifications when new videos come up. There will be weekly videos as well. There will be some Super Rugby previews as well. There will be some in-depth stuff and some play interviews coming up on this channel as well. So please have a look. Let me know what you think. Tell me if you agree with this stuff and yeah, see you next week.